Hi, this is Elias, and this morning we're going to take a look, or whenever you're watching this, we're going to take a look at this awesome question that came in on the C-Sharp Reddit uh, called, What is the purpose of using auto properties over just a public property? If you've been working with C-Sharp at all for any length of time, you've probably seen this type of syntax where we can uh, declare a getter and a setter on a property. This is called an auto-implemented property. Now, the way that we used to do properties before we got auto-implemented was you would have to create this backing field, and then in your getter and setter, you would return the value and do a set, uh, set the uh, field using this value. Now, one of the reasons that you might want to use a property over, say, exposing a field as public is you may want to do some sort of validation checks when you're uh, in your setter. So, for instance, I do a lot of work in Windows Presentation Foundation, WPF. A lot of times in WPF, when we're writing view models, we want to uh, let we want to raise the property change event, but only if the property is actually changed. So, what we'll do in our setter is say if the property if the backing field is different than the value passed in, then raise the property changed event and set our backing field. Uh, in the getter as well, sometimes you're not wrapping a field. You may be wrapping some sort of calculation. Uh, it depends on what you're doing. Now, uh, one question that got raised later on was, well, properties and public fields, well, they kind of look the same. Uh, if I build my code and I initially use a field and later on I switch to using a public property, uh, is that going to break my code? I decided to come up with a little example here, so let's go through it together. So what I've got is a simple console app here. You'll see that I'm instantiating three classes, three instances of, of uh, different classes, one called person property, one called person public field, and one called just person. And these live over in a class library. This is a .NET standard library. You'll see that person property has a public string called name with a getter and setter, so this is a public property. Uh, person public field just exposes a public field called name. And finally, the person class, for our example, will expose the public uh, field called name. Now, when we go to run our console app, uh, no surprises here. Uh, well, I still got it set up for my old example, so I'm going to clean my solution. I don't want to give away the punchline. Uh, I'll try running this one more time. Oh, build errors. What do we got? What did I do wrong? Ha! <laughs> Let me pause the video and see exactly what I did wrong. I can't pause it. Oh, no. Now nah, we're going to have to debug live. Type your namespace. Class library one cannot be found. Oh, yes, because this is not a project reference. This is an assembly reference uh, because I was trying to uh, set up the demo. Okay, now we can run. Look at that. Uh, always test. Your demos will always fail when you least expect it. Getting back to the point, you can see here that uh, in our app, first we instantiate person property, set the name equal to Elias, and then print out that property. Then we create the public field, uh, set that field equal to code nightmare, and print out that name. And finally, we use our person class, set its name to Elias Perunan, and print that out to console. Nothing mind-bending yet, right? Right. Okay. Let's make, let's, before we make our change, let's actually open this up in a tool called uh, dot peak. What I want to do here is show you what the, what this gets compiled down to. So if we look at, let's just look at our public field class. So if you're new to .NET, you may not realize that when .NET code is compiled, it actually gets compiled down to something called intermediate language or bytecode. So what happens is it takes this high-level C-sharp, VBNet, whatever you're using, compiles it down into this intermediate language, which will then get run by the .NET virtual machine. So in the comments here, .peak has actually what it's done for me is shown me here's the different, here's what the actual intermediate language or assembly level code is going to look like. So I've got my constructor, uh, I've got my uh, public string called name. So not much is going on here. 
and in my constructor, we're just calling the base class uh, object constructor, nothing too fancy. Let's take a look at person property. This is where things get real interesting. Notice here, and you know what? Let me see if I can put them up all. So this was public field. This is person property. Notice already we've got something interesting here. We've got this private string backing field. This is generated for us by the compiler. This is the backing. This is the field that actually backs this public property. Then we have this uh, public string name, and the compiler has generated two methods for us, get name and set name. And notice that these actually retrieve the value of the backing field and then set the value of the backing field based on what's passed into, into these two methods. And uh, again, our constructor is about the same. And finally, if we look at our person class, we'll see it's basically the same as our person public field. Let's take a look at program. So the console apps actual program and see what this IL looks like. It's a bit of a rat's nest here, but uh, stay with me. So just to review the code, again, we, we create person property, person public field, and, and just the person which has the backing field. Let's step through this intermediate language. So first thing we do is create a new instance of person property. Then we actually create a... Uh, we create this, uh, we load this string into memory, and then we call the person property set method. Look at that. So we load this string into memory, and then we call this virtual method, uh, or we call this method set name. Then, if we want to print this out to our console, we have to call the get name. So we actually load the value of that property into memory, and then we write that out to the screen. Let's go down and look at public field. Notice how this looks completely different. So we, what we're doing is we're loading the string into memory once again, but then we call this store field. So we're storing the value uh, code nightmare into this public field called name. Notice how that's completely different from loading this value into memory and then calling the method set name. And again, when we do the get uh, down here, uh, we, let's see, we, when we do our get a little bit further down, we have to get that, uh, the value of that field uh, through our property, and then we write it out to our, we write it out to the screen. Now, finally, we have our uh, person, and again, this is the same thing. We load up our string into memory, we store that in the field, and then we load up that string once again and then call our console write line. So the way that we uh, interact with uh, properties versus the way that we interact with uh, just public fields is totally different. When we're dealing with public properties, you have to think about that in terms of you are calling a method. The compiler is going to generate the code for you, but in the end, there's going to be a method that gets called, not a direct access to a field. Let's return to our example and see how things can break. So in our original code, I've got this person class, and we see that it's got this field called name, and then we write this out to the console. Now, you might, knowing what we know now, what do you think will happen if I change the implementation of this class, this person class, to instead of being a public field, to being a public property? Well, check this out. I'm going to build this... Uh, I'm going to build this class library, and now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the compiled class that I have now, this compiled library, I'm going to copy it and paste it into the console uh, directory, where I've got my console app, and I'm going to try to run my console app. Check this out. So I try to run my console app, and it immediately dies. Why? Because what it's complaining about, and in fact, I'm going to open up a console here so that we can look and see exactly what happened. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. I'll do a change directory, and I'll call console app, whoops, uh, console app 5.exe. 
And you'll see we get a unhandled exception, missing field, field not found, class library one dot person dot name. So this is how things can break uh, in weird border cases. Normally what would happen is if you were compiling against a, a NuGet library, you were compiling against uh, a class library, uh, when you rebuild your code, everything will just work. But if you were to drop in, just to try to drop in a binary replacement for this assembly and you've changed from a field to a property, well, suddenly the code is built against uh, thinking that person's name is a field and not a property. And so things will break. Anyway, that's all I've got for you. If you want to see the original uh, Reddit post uh, that covers this and a little bit of my explanation near the bottom, uh, I'll post this over to... I'll, th you can find this in the, uh, in the video description below. Sorry, I need a little bit more tea this morning when I'm recording this. Uh, if you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, and share it. I like to post these videos whenever I can. And uh, have an awesome day. Oh, yeah, and follow me on Twitter at AGFin or uh, search me on the Reddits at Elias underscore LSTU. Have a good day, everyone.